What's up dudes, Chooch back with another video and today we're getting into a full breakdown, review, and comparison of the 9bot one z 10 right here. And uh, this wheel has been absolutely, I, I loved it, I absolutely love this wheel. And any wheel I get on now just feels inferior in quality and stability, everything like that. I absolutely, I love this wheel, I really do. And um, it's one of those wheels that it, when you first get it out of the box, it's going to be so much different than like your King Song, your 9bots, your M Supers. The feeling of it's just a completely different, your riding style is completely different. So instead of being like a, it feeling like a Schwinn bicycle, this feels like a, uh, like a Kawasaki Ninja between your feet, you know what I mean? Instead of feeling like you got a little bicycle tire, it just feels like a robust motorcycle, you know what I mean? The build quality on this thing is absolutely fantastic. I've never, I didn't even think they could make a unicycle with a shell this strong and robust. And it, it will just take knocks, man, and just absolutely hold up. It looks great. Everything about this wheel is awesome. The charging port on it, everything is just perfect. The one thing that you see on here that I did put though is some side pads. And the look of the wheel without side pads is incredible. But you'll know, see that I just duct taped this on here and it's just because I have the wheel for a few days. If I owned this wheel, I would actually buy some like M Super V3S side pads and I'd put them on, on the side of this wheel. But what I had to do actually is I took some, and I'll insert the clip for you guys, I took some Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. But after putting a lot of miles on this thing, man, or really riding around a good bit, um, I do notice one thing that I think I found 9 by that they actually they may, may have prevented them from putting uh, side pads on this thing. So you're gripping this thing, and you need some sort of side pad to grab onto this thing, guys. After just beating on this thing and riding it and all terrain and everything, Right here is where it really hits, and you need something to grab to be able to jump this thing, to be able to really funny hop it, you know what I mean? So right here is on the seam. You see the seam? And I think that may be why they didn't put any pads on here, because it would interrupt the seam right here, and they would you'd have to take the pad off in order to access it. So what I'm going to do is just make my own, honestly, just something just just completely thrown on there, ghetto style, just so I can ride, ride it and have pads on there tomorrow. So I'm going to throw... So, this is what I figured out. I'm Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and some Gorilla Tape and watch. I'm going to end up making something that can actually work basically as a side pad on this thing. And shoot, I don't care what it looks like as long as it, as long as it works for me for the time being. And I can relay it to 9 but They can do that as an aftermarket accessory or something. Because I love the Z, dude. This wheel is incredible. What I mean, it is so much fun. I can hardly contain myself. I don't want to go ride right now. All I want to do is go ride, man. I just, it's like midnight right now, and I just want to go ride, man. But I'm going to throw some of these right here on this spot, about right there. It's not looking like the best thing in the world, and this is one that the cat decided to tear up anyways, so I'm not using my good, <laughs> my good pads anyways, so throw that on there just like that, and then I'm going to I'm going to, of course, make it look a little bit better and tape it down some more. But just right there on this side, let's see. Yeah, that already helps on that side. So literally just that little bit of bracing right there already helps on that side. All right. So, dudes, I ended up using the entire box of Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. And I put three on each side. I got two on the bottom and one on the top. Basically, just duct tape down. And I'm not kidding you guys. It feels so much more comfortable. Like this feels like you can like, it just feels so good now. Like this wheel is perfect. That's all it was missing is side pads on it, dude. That's all the 9 by ones he was missing. And you clamp in on this thing, you actually like bunny hop it now. You couldn't do that before. So hopefully my Gorilla Tape and my Mr. Clean Magic Erasers holds up for tomorrow's off-road ride. I'm just gonna take them off whenever I'm done with the ride, but it should should be good to go to go and just duct tape them to the side so I'd be able to get that control. And you also may, may have seen in like the second video I put out, I was getting speed wobbles. And what was happening is you have such a wide stance on this thing, so your 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 feet are out like this, and then there's so much weight at the top of this thing, you hit one little bump, and the tire pressure was a huge thing too. You hit one bump with that high tire pressure combined with um not really much side cushioning here and you'd get that oscillation back and forth like this at high speeds and I was able to completely solve that by putting these side pads on here and then taking some air out the tire and I, I'm able to go 30 comfortably everywhere I go now 
absolutely no no speed wobbles on deceleration, acceleration, or anything like that. It, I completely solved that problem. And one thing you'll have to do maybe on this wheel is adapt to your riding style because the motor is offset in this thing. So basically what I'm talking about is the motor is not dead in the middle of this wheel. Like it's a hub motor, but it's not gonna be dead set, set, center. It's over to the side and then you have a battery over here in its place. And so the, the weight counteracts from the battery and the offset of the motor to keep everything level. But at high speeds, that rotation tends to drag me a little bit to the right. So what I would do, and this may, this is just maybe in your head, and people with King songs have said, hey man, you, it drags to the left or whatever. It's all in your footing. Everything's in your footing. These things aren't gonna drive to the left. They're gonna drive straight, you know what I mean? But it's all in your footing. So what what I adapted to on this wheel is I kept, I kept my right foot completely flat like that. Kept my right foot completely flat, right in the middle, and then my left foot was kind of like my controller. I stayed on the ball of my foot right here. And these aren't my normal riding shoes, but I'd stay on the ball of my foot. And what I mean by that is you want to be on this part of your foot right here, on the ball of it, to have that full control, pivoting back and forth, all of this. Keep this foot flat for stability. Keep this foot raised up right here on this side. So this is what I ride like. I literally ride in this stance right here with this foot raised on this wheel and then this foot flat on this wheel and that gives me ultimate stability riding. I don't know why but it's just what works for this wheel. And um, another thing y'all probably wanted to see is the tire pressure on this thing. So I'll check it for you guys. I, I personally I have not checked it myself and I really don't care. I just get it to where it feels right but I guess everybody wants to know kind of so they can get it to the right pressure and everything. And um, here let's go ahead and rotate this thing around and find so the cool thing about this wheel is it has a hole directly right here. You get this nice flat with this cool little rubber retention system. It closes up nice right here. It keeps water out. You can open it up like this. You just rotate around. You'll see your valve stem. My valve stem's right here. I rotate it right under here like this to about right there. And it comes with this extension right here. But I found that the actual 9 by one extension that came with this wheel works a lot better. So just take this bad boy in and look how simple this is. Take this bad boy, stick it straight in like this, just twist it, and it's already clamping on that valve right there. Screw this down like this, let's see. All right, so I'm getting like, I'm getting like 10 pounds of PSI is what I'm getting in this thing. So I honestly, dudes, I think I got it pretty much as low as it can go with still keeping this thing on the bead probably. And like, cause it's rated, it says 32 PSI cold. Um, it's, let's see, that's the, all right, max load, all this other stuff. So it just says, it doesn't give me a minimum or maximum PSI. It just says 32 PSI cold and I got 10 in it. So I don't know dudes, it's, um, it, it it works out for me guys. I don't know. I, I just it felt like to, it felt totally wrong with all that air in there. I don't know what was messing up, but it just didn't feel right. And this thing is weird. You gotta like push this thing down, then rotate it as you're pushing it down to get this thing out. There we go. And this thing pops out. So this thing's better to use than this. This thing just like that it comes with, you'd be sitting there for an hour trying to get this thing on there. But um Yep, that just closes up right there. So I got 10 PSI in this thing, guys, and I really don't know. Like, I understand, like, stuff, like, tubeless tires and stuff, you need to keep them high. But it really wasn't. This is what it seems like for... So, like, that's the kind of the balance I get. And when I first got this thing, it felt like I was dropping a rock on the ground. It was like... <laughs> but now it just kind of bounces. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's, that's the PSI I got in there. And uh, it just, it feels perfect to me right there. And uh, I got some stuff I want to go over here in my, in my notes right right quick, guys. So go over, I got took a bunch of notes and on everything right here, my field notes. So my weight is 120 pounds, so tire pressure, 10 PSI for 120 pounds. I wrote in here, you need to carry a pump with you. So for this wheel, I think that they should ship like a small little pump in, in the package that it comes with. And so for, going off-road and everything, you can deflate your tire, get all that grip, all that really nice off-roading abilities with this thing. And then if you're trying to get range out of it, which I wasn't really trying to, but for my range test, I noticed that it said 52 miles. And with my low tire pressure like this, there's so much more friction on the ground, you gotta think about that. 
and I think what would have been nice is being able to pump up the tire pressure to be able to get more range like on the bike pass like coming home and then deflate it for my off-road jumps and everything like that and tearing through the trails and all that stuff. So I think that would be a really good idea to offer with this wheel is some type of little pump so that you could be able to vary it for range or off-roading abilities. Um, the wheel, w w w w the torque is insane on this thing. The guy's like, there's no other, I don't know how to explain it, I don't know what kind of mojo they put in this thing, but when you lean into this thing, this wheel, it takes off. I mean, the zero to 30 on this thing has to be the faster. I mean, it. it I, I mean, compared to the M Super X, I don't know, but it, it feels faster than the M Super V3S, the zero to 30 on this thing. It's incredible. And, um, the torque, whenever if you're if you're tire pressure, I'd say if it's over 20 pounds of psi, and you go to torque out of a corner, and you're on some like really paved asphalt, dude, this thing's gonna spin. Like it literally, it 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 will just spin under you, man. It, the wheel will take off, and it goes and just do like a little burnout and take off. And um, the riding style is just completely different, but it's in a fun way. I even wrote that in here, not double underlined the fun way part. Once you get a hold of this thing, the first day it's gonna feel really weird. But man, once you get once you get used to it, your your riding style is gonna be completely different. And it's kind of like you're, you're leaning into it. You're putting your knee out. You know what I mean? When you're leaning into your corner, you're really putting your whole body into it. You know what I mean? You're feeling it with this wheel. You can't just stand straight up on this wheel and just kind of drive it and mosey along if you want to go fast. You know what I mean? If you really want to go fast on this wheel, you're putting your whole body into it, man. And it just it feels like oh it feels like you are driving this thing. It feels like it is just part of you, and it feels like you got like a little miniature like bulldozer under your feet, dude. This this wheel is robust, man. It it feels like you got something something under you for sure. And um, let's see, let's uh, what else did I write in here? You got to use your weight shift like on a street bike. You know what I mean? It's not like you know how you'll see a street bike rider and that's the way this tire is designed too man you want to really get on the edge of this wheel you want to have it when you're going into a, a, a sweeping corner you want to have the wheel angled like this you want to have that pedal dropped almost dragging and you want to be riding on the side of the wheel just like a street bike would you know what i mean you want to have your full body leaning into it and you want to be driving this thing you know what i mean this is the way you want to be looking going into a corner you want to have this thing on the side tilted and that's going to give you your best turning you know what i mean if you just try to go into a corner and just like turn it like these other wheels it's just not going to work um, let's see here. There's a lot more inertia and sheer mass of, of, of a larger rotating wheel like this. You know what I mean? It's not like, say, say the, the mass of like a, um, you got like a, a small little wheel spinning and then you got a big wheel spinning. If you ever played with a gyroscope, you know what I mean? If that, the big wheel spinning, it's going to be hard to torque that wheel around. You know what I mean? You're going to be sitting there and it's going to be, I've done the science experiment before where the guy who takes the bicycle wheel spins it with a big rope and then you sit there and you try to turn it, you know what I mean? The inertia from that wheel is just a lot more weight and a lot more heaviness going around and you've got to accompany for this. And it at high speeds, once you get used to it, it's, this thing feels so stable, man. It feels like you actually have half of a motorcycle under you when the, the wheel, when it's deflated a little bit, it feels like it has suspension. I mean, you can literally get in traffic and just cruise with this thing with full confidence in this thing that's not going to shut off on you and that it's just going to just be stable. You know what I mean? Rock solid, stable. I mean, this thing's uh, the M Super is pretty stable too, but you hit a bump or anything like that, you hit a big pothole, I mean, you're going down on this. This thing right here, it tanks potholes. It tanks bumps, man. It just, woo, woo, you're just like bulldozing over it, man. It's just incredible. Once you're used to how the wheel behaves, you adapt to your you adapt your stance, like I was saying in the beginning. You know what I mean? You adapt your stance to, to the and the inertia, like I said right here, I wrote it all down. And um, your stabilization at high speed, both on and off road, with that inertia of that wheel, it really helps. But you just have to you have to take in mind that you have that inertia whenever you're cornering and stuff. You saw that whenever I was trailing with this thing, I would literally I'd set up for my corners a little bit in advance. You know what I mean? It's not like one of those fly on the move things, you, you gotta you gotta prepare for your corners a little bit, you know what I mean? Which isn't a bad thing. It's 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 really this wheel is honestly like it's one of my favorite wheels I've ever ridden. I don't know why it is, but just standing on the other ones right now, I'd if I could take any out, I'd take this one out. I love this wheel. It's fun. A lot of fun. It may just be, be because it's new, but I don't know. Um right here it, I I said it's like a it basically it feels like you got a rock solid street bike under your feet. The wheel, the wheel is heavy, so I don't recommend this wheel for beginners, guys. So, like, this is the heaviest wheel, I think, on the market, guys. And, like, pretty much whenever you're just now learning to how to unicycle, you're going to have to learn how to hold it up with one leg. 
And whenever people are just learning to unicycle, they get their first wheel, the hardest part is keeping it up with one leg like this, you know what I mean? Because the first thing they're gonna do is be like, oh, it's gonna fall over on them and then it's gonna flip out and it's gonna shoot into the wall or whatever, you know what I mean? And this thing is top heavy, so I just, this thing is for people that have had one wheel before or had, had another unicycle before that are moving up to it, you know what I mean? This is not, if you get this as your first wheel and you learn on this, props to you because it'll be kind of hard, you know what I mean? It will be kind of difficult because it's so heavy and this thing with just the top heaviness of it just makes you kind of want to go places, you know what I mean? So I, I'm so used to it with that one foot, but other people's first tendency when they first get a unicycle, they can't level that foot over here and this thing just, just I mean, it just shoots all over the place, you know what I mean? And so. Having a, a a more light unicycle like the one or either like the King Song 16S where you can really get a grip on it and just have, get used to it real quick as your beginner wheel, it makes it a lot better, you know what I mean? So that's one thing I, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners at all. I just wouldn't. Um, let's see. The quality I mean it on this wheel is outstanding. I mean every from everything from the power button, just how this thing cuts on, you know what I mean? There's no finick with with having to hold this thing down until you hear a beep or anything. You press press the button, the thing turns on like that. Boom. It sounds like it's a robot starting up or something too, man. It sounds great and just feels robust. Um the safety features for this thing, I mean you get Segway safety features in this thing. I mean, some of you may not like it. But I'm telling you what Gatway has got to learn from this, dude, because what this thing does, it just feels so safe. You get going past 30 miles an hour, there's no beeps, it rocks you back. And it's not something that's going to throw you off of or anything. It slowly tilts you back so you're not going to overpower the motor and throw your ass off or face plant or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's The engineering in this thing is it's incredible, and you can tell when you're riding it. Um, another thing is when you start getting under like let's see about 35% battery on this thing it's going to start regulating your speed and um, some of you may not like that but that's a safety feature that's going to keep you from face plant you know what I mean on these it, it, you get down to like 20% and it's, and it's barely regulating your speed on this one whenever I was coming back from a 45 mile ride I, I had to come in really slow man I took my helmet off and really everything while I was riding because I was riding at about 12 miles an hour you know what I mean but what it does is it'll start 30, about 35%, it'll limit you to like, I think it's uh, 26 miles an hour instead of like tw like 30 miles an hour. And then it, uh, like, let's see, 30%, you'll be down to like 22. At, um, at like 25% of battery, you'll be down to like 15-ish. Like and then when you get down to like the low 20% of battery, it limits you to around like 12, you know what I mean? And it's just a safety thing because if you start overpowering this wheel and you don't have that battery power there to slow you down or stop you or tilt this thing back or anything, the only thing that's going to happen is a face plant, you know what I mean? So they really put the engineering into this wheel and even with my low tire pressure, I was able to get 45 miles and I stayed on the wheel the entire time. I left from my door, I rode 45 miles in 100 degree heat and it never overheated, never had a problem. I stayed on the wheel the entire time until it completely died and I had to take an Uber back home. So I was trying to do, it was a, it was basically, it was gonna be like a 50, 55 mile trip. And um, I was gonna go from, from downtown Denver all the way to Cherry Creek State Park, hit a bunch of off-road trails and stuff, and that's what killed my battery, man. All the off-road trails and stuff y'all saw me hitting in those videos, those were offshoots of me doing my range tests. And um, basically, those killed it. That that all the off-roading and high torque stuff, hit going into jumps and and decelerating, accelerating and stuff, it eats your battery. You know what I mean? So it says 52 miles, but if you're doing hard accelerating on that stuff with a low tire pressure, expect around like 45 miles. You know what I mean? That's what I got. 45 miles. The last two or three miles were really slow. Um, let's see here. Uh, the app works the best of any wheel, hands down. The Segway app, I don't know what it is, but uh, I literally, I had the 9 by app on my phone installed from years ago. I got this wheel, turned it on, opened that app up, it connected perfectly, it gave me all my features, access to it. There was no Chinese writing, there was no shot in the dark with the software, it was all perfect. My speed was absolutely precise, matched up with all the other apps, the speed on the, on, on the 9 by app. The, um, the lighting on this thing, you see that I got it set right now to match my helmet. These lights actually are the coolest lights of any wheel on this thing. And this, I'm not going to go over all the settings and everything right now, 
but basically it has all your stuff. You got the cosmic, you got the meteor on here, you got the, the breathing effect, everything like that, and the colors are all true, guys. So like if you want if you want orange, it's not gonna it's gonna be orange. It's not gonna look yellow, it's not gonna look blue, it's not gonna look faded green, it's gonna be orange, you know what I mean? And they have a whole selection of RGB wheel on there where you can select any color range you want and set it up to how like, to match your helmet, to match your riding gear, to match your shoes, whatever it may be for the day. And I usually don't like lights on wheels, but they did it right with this wheel. They did it right, and, and your, your headlight is bright, and your, your tail light is bright. And they both work incredibly well, and I like that feature. And having your battery display go right here on the front, simple LED panel, and a little Bluetooth indicator right here as well. It, everything they thought about, the whole interface, lighting, they couldn't have been better on this wheel. Could not have been better. Um, the mud guard, it also works well. I was going to put that in there. This, I mean, it comes with this big mud guard right here. You see this big thing? And if you if you don't have it on there, and you go riding just over a puddle or something, you're going to get. I mean, you're going to get your whole back soaked, your backpack, everything's going to be wet. But this thing, it works phenomenally well. Um, I have not tried the trolley handle. I really don't care for adding any extra weight to it. I haven't gone anywhere that I really would need the trolley handle. Um, but this mud guard, man, you just put this thing on there, and it just it gets it. it it's incredible. It works perfectly, and I think other wheels should definitely ship with mud guards. Um, let's see. Pedals, man. Another thing I love about this wheel is the dead go pedals on it. These things are wide pedals, man. And the one thing that happens on the on the V3S is my pinky toe falls asleep. My pinky toe hangs off the edge of the pedal on the V3S, and after 20 miles, my pinky toe is asleep, and it makes my whole side of my foot right here go numb. And on these, man, they are wide pedals, and I did fall, and I clipped the rocket with it, but golly, man, they are so comfortable, man. I love these pedals. They just, they work. They're simple, they work, they're grippy. The only thing is, when they get wet, they're slippery, so be careful with that. There's a little bit of uh, grip tape on there to help with that, but when these things get wet, I know from first-hand experience, they do get slippery, for sure. Um, let's see. Uh... Okay, the first thing, the first first day riding off road, I, I noticed my ankles are rubbing a little bit. So, so pretty much to tell y'all exactly, talking about right here is without these pads, the first thing that hits on here is your ankles, that little ball of your ankle, and off road and hitting jumps and everything like that. I was like, why is my ankle hurting so bad? And it rubbed the blister on there. But as soon as I put these pads on here, it offers a little buffer to keep my ankle from being right up on this thing. It made all the difference in the world, and it was just so much better riding experience. You know what I mean? And um, another thing I wanted to talk about is, you know how this, this wheel, it has the cutoff under the handle right here where you can just grab it and cut it off. I immediately disabled that. I don't like that feature at all really. Some people may like it. But for instance, um, another, one reason is I have my speaker on here and this actually would cut the wheel off just having the speaker on there mounted like that. It would cause the wheel to shut off. But another thing is, whenever you're going down a big steep hill, one thing I tend to do is I may take a foot off like this, keep one foot on, and grab the wheel like this to stabilize it while I'm going down a steep hill or something like that, and not completely dismount. And what it would do if you had that feature enabled, it would just shut the wheel off and you'd be face planted, you know what I mean? So that's one thing to keep in mind, and I like the fact that you added that in there, but it's cool that you can shut it off, and that's, I, I chose to shut that off. Um, endurance wise, Range, riding comfort, and, and etc. Just being able to hop on this wheel and go for 45 miles without ever getting off to take a break. I've never been able to do that with any wheel. With the, with the V3S, man, halfway through my rides, I always stop, but always take a break, and I always let, let this thing cool down a little bit. With this, I felt completely confident that it wouldn't have any problems with cooling down or anything like that or having overheating. So I just went 45 miles not nonstop. My feet didn't fall asleep. My feet didn't hurt. My back didn't hurt. My, my legs felt great. Everything was absolutely fine. My, my shins right here, my inside of my, my shins right here didn't hurt at all because I had these pads on here. And also my ankles where they were rubbing before didn't rub at all because of these pads on here. And um, you're going to have to, if you get this wheel, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll have to make your own pads or whatever, but it's not no big deal at all. You can either buy them or you either make them. Um, so... I just talked about, let's see, a full battery, 100% to zero, no foot pain. Literally 100, 100% charged, all the way to zero, absolutely no foot pain at all, and that's just because these big pedals, you know what I mean? And it, they, they can clip stuff, but no, no foot pain. 
Range is impressive even though this is, this isn't like a 1300 watt hour wheel. This is like a 908, what is it, 980 watt hour wheel. That's not much, you know what I mean? There's other, like that's that's just 100 more watt hours in the King Song 16 inch, you know what I mean, in this big wheel. And um, for, for this big of a wheel with this weight and that much friction on there, for 980 watt hours, that's incredible, guys. Incredible, incredible range for 45 miles, I think. For how hard I was riding it, if you babied this thing at 15 miles an hour, dude, you could go easily 52 miles. But I mean, I was torquing, dude. I was like, like jumping jumps and hitting corners and riding up hills and stuff. So it's just, it, it really, it, it just depends. So proper PSI, let's go, let's go to that. So proper PSI, I'd say for someone, I, I'm, I like my wheels soft, so I'm going to say proper, you know what I mean? Proper PSI for someone, your average rider out there is going to be around 150 pounds, you know what I mean? So I'm just taking it into account, all that stuff. What The pressure I would recommend in this wheel for the average 150 pound rider that's about five, you know what I mean, five, six, five, seven, I'd say go for about 15 PSI, you know what I mean? And it's rated 32, but go for about 15, and trust me on that. You, you, you I mean, it will, it will be a lot better. Um, and this wheel, I, I don't, I hit tons of rocks and everything with this low tire pressure. I didn't have any type of problem with the, this thing coming off the beat. You know what I mean? The tire never came off the beat or anything like that. And I mean, I don't know how, how in the future that you really would rebeat this tire if it did ever come off or anything like that. But um, I didn't have a problem with it. I don't know exactly how this thing's seated. It has a lock system, whatever it is in there. But I'd recommend 15 PSI for a 150 pound rider any day. Um, let's see. And that's, that's about it, dudes. Honestly, I, I went through all the YouTube uh, comments and everything, and I looked on, on there to see if there was anything else before I did this video that I could really hit on and talk about. If y'all have any other questions, um, I'm going to actually try to go get one more ride in on this thing, guys, and, and, and do the whole nine yards on that. I'll be glad to put in a segment talking about anything, any other questions that I didn't cover in this video. Just put it in the comments. And I'll cover it in the next video that I do of like a city ride or whatever on this thing. Because I think it's going to be my next one is a really fast city ride. Since I've gotten used to this wheel and how it behaves in the corners and everything, I, I think I'll really be able to go quick on this thing. But um, any questions, throw them in the comments, guys. I hope I cover everything on this thing. And one thing I wanted to do real quick is give y'all a close-up on this on this wheel, guys. And just let y'all let, let check it. Check everything out, because that's one thing I wanted to see. I wanted to see close-ups on the wheel, you know what I mean, before I got it. And see just how the wheel looks, you know what I mean? Let's just go up here and just, y'all can just look at the build quality on this thing and just check this thing all out, like under here. That's just how the tire looks right there, around here. Under there, that's how your pedals look right there. Nice pedals. Coming up here, just ignore the duct tape on there, guys. Just ignore that because that's just something I prefer, and that's how I set it up. Back around right there, your lighting. Is your little your port right here where you can get to, where you can get to your um, valve stem, and you just close it up like this. You just push that closed like that. It's just a little rubber grommet. And just sweet wheel, guys. Just really, really. Incredible, incredible wheel. Links are going to be in the description where y'all can pre-order the 9x1 Z10 or any of the Z series, the M Super X, the 18L, or either you could just pick up the M Super V3S, one of the fastest wheels I think there is, or either the King Song 16S right here is going to be available soon. Um, the link supports the channel, guys. I really appreciate everybody clicking that link and buying wheels through that. It really, really means a lot. Um, if if y'all have any questions about the M Super, um, I mean about the 9x1 Z10, just throw them in the comments, guys, and I'll answer anything else like that. I know I may not have hit every single base on this video, but I tried to. Um, any questions, 
throw it in the comments. I'll answer them, guys. But uh, if y'all enjoyed the video, throw a thumbs up, and I will see y'all in the next one.